Hello again, this is John Muller from the JP Muller Group, and uh, today we're going to talk to you about the next steps after you have created a copy of the template for yourself and erased all the template kind of sample tasks. Now you want to start your own project. So we're going to talk about how we enter that data. We want to concentrate on the non-blue headed columns, right? So like the risk, level, task, owner, start, and duration, duration and complete. Um, the first task, uh, the first thing you want to note is you always want to enter at a level, starting with one. So your first line in your project plan should always have a, a one in there. Um, you can have multiple level ones, etc., but uh, always start with a one. I like to make my first task basically the name of the, my project. So I'm going to call this my, my little project. And I could put an owner if I want, etc. But because this is going to be the project name, I'm not going to actually put any other information here. Next thing I'm going to do is put my first real task of the project or real section of the project. So I'm going to make this a level two. So we're going to start to build a kind of hierarchy here. We'll call this requirements. Okay. And when I do that, you're going to note that it indents over here and it starts to build this work breakdown structure 1, 1.1, 1 .1, etc. And here we, I'm also going to make this a parent task, if you will. A parent task is one that has a child or one that's going to be indented. Or in other words, we'll have a level that's higher than itself. So, for example, I'm going to make this level 3 and we'll call this interview stakeholders. And now I'm going to start giving myself, uh, you know, ownership. And we'll start to fill in some information about dates and durations. Um, so let's say this is going to start today. So I'm going to actually put the formula equals today. I could actually put a date instead. So for example, I could put 10, 18, you know. Let's say this is going to take me a whole week. So I'm going to put one week here. For duration, it's automatically going to calculate the end date. I could also put one weeks, one week, etc. It's smart enough to understand um, how to carve that up and determine what the units we're talking about. Notice also that it fills in the entire week starting from Monday and going till Friday, even though. This date that we entered, which is 2.16, um, or excuse me, not 2.16, the start date 2.10 is on a Saturday. So it's smart enough to understand that 2.10 being a Saturday, in my conf configuration, is a non-working day. In a future video, we're going to show you how to adjust what the working days are, as well as holidays. Okay, so let's go back. Another task here, let's call it write requirements. We're also going to make that um, sign to me. And we're going to have this start. We're going to make it equal to, we're going to grab P8 here, and we're going to add a day. Okay? Now notice what this is going to do. It's going to make it start on 2.17. Okay. And now we're also going to make this, let's make this a two-day effort. And again, I could have put two days, etc. Two days. However you want to do that. Okay. And it's going to end on 221. So we can go look and see how our Gantt chart is starting to build out. Notice also that here, Monday 219, it counted as a non-working day. That's because in our holiday calendar, I think it's President's Day or something like that. So again, we'll talk about that in a future video. All right. So let's add a few more things. Let's add a... Let's go back to 2, and we'll put development and that's going to be a parent test I'm not going to enter anything else let's put three again this is going to be a child so it has to be one higher so we'll put 
design and I can assign it to myself and we'll make that start after this ends plus one and one day we'll make the design three days now we'll add another task at the same level called code code it assign it to myself make it start after the design is complete and let's call that two weeks. All right, let's talk about what we did here. We have a bunch of parents, and notice the parents get bolded. It's for easier readability. And children, right? So one, two, three, three, two, three, three. It's showing the levels or the indentation. And notice what it does here with the work date breakdown structure. It goes one, one point one, one one one, one one two, one two, one two one, one two two. So we start to build out that work breakdown structure. Let's say we want to, uh, let, let's add a few more. Let's go to uh, two, let's go to deployment. And we'll make that a regular task. We'll make that start after this one's done. We'll make that take one day, or, or let's say one week. We don't test in mind projects. It's a joke. And let's also add go live. Go live, we're going to make after deployment. And we'll call it zero days. A task with zero days, we consider a milestone. Milestones appear so we look in here in my Gantt chart, we have this diamond. You can actually configure that and make it whatever shape you want. That diamond is indicative of a milestone. Okay. Let's talk about some other things. Let's say we want to mark something as complete. Let's change the percent complete to 100%. Notice what it does. It's going to gray out the line as well as make the Gantt bar this color. I believe that's a blue. I'm colorblind, so be kind to me. So we have this kind of greenish color for tasks that aren't done, and blue for ones that are. We also have a spark line, progress spark line, indicating our progress here. And it's filling the whole cell, and it's all blue. We'll talk about those in a future video as well. But the key is that a completed task shows up as gray, a parent task shows up as bold. A child task that's not complete shows up in regular black font. A milestone shows up as a diamond. And um, that's that. We could also have past due tasks. So let's add uh, one just for, just for fun. Let's actually say, for whatever reason, let's say that this thing P1 was supposed to be done P1 minus, you know, 30 days ago. When I make that pass due, notice what it does. It goes red. And notice because these other ones were dependent on it, they went red too, as well as the bar here. The bar went red. So that's what happens when they're past due. If I do 100% here, that's going to turn into blue because it's actually done, but the other ones remain red because they're also past due still. All right, so let's uh, kind of undo that for a second, and we'll make that plus one again to have a regular chart so it doesn't look funky. So that's it. So we talked about um, those different types of tasks. We also talked about the Gantt um, chart colors. Uh, when we roll up a task or when we have a parent task. So let's say we happen to have dates here. So let's say this was 217 or 210. And let's add up these. Let's say it was seven days. Oops, this was wrong. I entered. Oops, 210, 2018. Helps when I enter an actual date. We'll notice we get this darker green, 
which is indicative of a parent task. Okay. Some other Gantt um, information for you. Notice that in the dates that go across the top, we have the week number, we have the day of the week, and we have the day. On the day that we are currently, and today is um, February 10th, notice it highlights it. So it gives us a visual cue that, um, of what today's date is. Um, it's also smart enough to figure out what day to start the Gantt chart, but we'll talk about manipulating the Gantt um, headings and the Gantt chart itself uh, in a future video. So let's talk about the progress spark lines. So here we have the progress spark lines or spark charts. And what these are are little bar charts that fill just one cell. And they tell us how we're doing. So let's say we have a few, let's go here and make something that's 25% of the way done. It's going to tell me that it's going to fill in green because based on the dates here, I should be about 25% of the way done. Now, if you look at the um, sample uh, template before you deleted the lines, there's a section called progress spark lane bar, spark line bar charts that you give you an example of um, different colors. It'll show you yellow if um, your um, if you didn't start and you're behind schedule or if you're partially complete but behind schedule it'll show red if you're past due so for example I think we did this before where we were past due right where we made this minus a few weeks here and notice the spark line went red but notice it still shows 25 percent green because we were 25 percent done so let's say this was supposed to be instead of minus 14. Let's make it minus 1. And let's make it 10% of the way done. Oh, because it's on the weekend. We're not supposed to start yet. So let's actually change the start date of this. Let's say we were supposed to start on the 9th. And let's say this is supposed to be 1 week and let's say we're let's see zero percent done I'm failing to show you like a good uh let's take that's because the other one's mine let's minus eight okay there we go now because it's the tenth and this was supposed to go from the 7th to the 13th, I should have started already. So it's showing the portion I should have gotten done is yellow. So let's add 10% done. Notice it'll show 10% done. This is what I should have had done. And the rest is what I should still have to do. So spark lines are really good for kind of giving you a visual clue of how you're doing against how you should have been doing. Hopefully that'll help you out there. Let me uh, change a few things back here. Get this work just right again. All right, good. Let me give you a better view on the spark line. Perfect. All right. So that's it for uh, this second video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, tune in for more. Thanks.